Hey guys, sharing how you can spend seven hours in Paris or more, it could up to be up to be 10 hours from London, or if you have a layover in Paris, definitely not waste the time. Go out and explore and see. And if you're in a bordering country such as London or so, you can actually hop into Paris for a couple hours. Now, we took the train from St. Pancras in London to Gare de Nord, which is in, um, which is the train station in Paris. When you go into St. Pancras, it's pretty much like almost like a mini airport. You're doing the same thing, security check, handing over your passports to, because you're crossing borders going into another country. And this is coming from London. You get up to the deck uh, where the Eurostar train is. That's the train you would book. It's the only one I've been on. You book the Eurostar. I recommend booking it a little bit earlier than you normally would because they tend to book up really fast, especially during the summer. You don't want to miss out getting your ticket. It's super simple to do. Just go on their website, book your ticket, choose your dates. Fifty-five and fifty-six. So where would it? Where would it? Over this one. Okay. So we are on the Eurostar, waiting to take off to head into Paris. And the train time should be uh, about two hours and twenty minutes. So. So the train ride is pretty nice and if you book your tickets super early like the first train out which i do if i remember correctly it's 5 or 5 30 a.m you get to see the sunrise you get to see the beautiful countryside as you're traveling into paris it's really a nice ride so definitely book it on the right hand side uh off the train it's a gorgeous ride and it makes for something lovely to see outside of the window so once we got into the train station in Paris, which is Gare du Nord, I always have a hard time pronouncing that train station. Of course, French is not my first language. <laughs> but once we get in, once we got in there, we decided to just hop in an Uber. I highly, highly recommend if this is your first time in Paris and you want to see uh, a lot more of like the monuments and so on, to definitely book a hop on and hop off bus. It's super easy. That way, you get to hit all of the monuments, you get to see all of the landmarks, or most of them, the most important ones and you've seen them and spent the time doing that. If it's not your first time, we just wanted to go in, have lunch, and just kind of like walk around and chill out in Paris because we were in London for the week visiting uh, my family. And so we just took the time to just hop in an Uber. Uber is rather expensive, I must say. It's probably one of the most expensive cities I've paid for Uber in. So be prepared <laughs> if you plan to um, Uber while you are in Paris. I also want to note that while you're in Paris, no matter what, be cognizant of your belongings. Just make sure you have them on you. Be aware of your surroundings wherever you are, especially if you're traveling solo, because the city can tend to be a little bit tricky. <laughs> So our first stop was at Cafe Cassette simply because um, we got in right around lunchtime and we were starving and needed lunch. Highly, highly recommend Cafe Cassette. Uh, it's gorgeous on the inside. It's filled with like fall flower, uh, patio seating, just beautiful and amazing. The food is yummy, delicious. I highly recommend that you do not ask for kind of like substitutions, especially as a tourist, they really don't like that overall in Paris. So for a better food experience, just try to be polite to the food and how they make it and how they cook it and just enjoy yourself. So this was really nice. It's picturesque, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It's lovely, it's super accessible. Everyone's nice. Be prepared for people to be smoking, especially uh, while they're eating. That's a thing you know that they do a lot in Europe. The French onion soup is highly recommended. The coffee of course. Love me a good cup of coffee and I was craving one so much. We also had like a tuna tartare I believe a salad or something of the sort. Can't quite remember but it was so good. Yeah this was it and I had it with uh what was this again? I don't know if this was lentil or something. Yeah but it was really good. So I highly recommend lots of stuff off the menu. Uh, my husband had different options too but this tuna tartare 
oh, it took my breath away. It was yummy, delicious, and I could eat that again. I actually should make one at home for myself. <laughs> but lovely lunch at Cafe Cassette. Really gorgeous photo ops, so definitely take advantage of that. So after lunch, we did a little bit of shopping. We went into Hermes just to kind of like see if there's anything that tickled our fancy. Uh, we didn't quite buy anything, but we did end up getting another cup of coffee and pastry from the Hermes Cafe, which is so nice because you get served in like Hermes mugs and stuff, which is really, really cute and nice and makes for a great experience. Now, you might not be going shopping, or even if you are, then you kind of like plan out, like block your time and make sure you're always measuring how far you are, how far you're going. I would say start with the furthest distance from the train so that if you have to rush back to the train for your train, you're close by. So we did some shopping. Um, I'm in the back of an Uber, heading to vintage shopping area. So once you're in the Marais Paris area, it's like a little small strip where there's lots of vintage stores and you can shop around for whatever is on your wish list or things that you're looking for, just ask. Um, I saw lots of amazing pieces. I think I only came home with one small brooch. Also found the Chanel bag. It was a beautiful, gorgeous bag. The price was okay, but it just wasn't a color I wanted in my closet. Again, you have quite a few hours, so pan out the time as to how and what you want to do for us. It was just about strolling around, talking to strangers, especially the older Parisians. They're so awesome. They have so much story to tell, and I love that. So you have some time that you can actually spend and do stuff. Just flesh out what you want to do during those hours and pan it out so that you make it back to the train station on time. And I like to book the second to last train to go back to London, simply because if I miss that second to last one then there might be an option <laughs> to go on the last one it was such a nice easy day spent in Paris my husband and I it was it was just seven hours and we just hung out and did something super simple you can do so much more just plan it out but it's easy accessible with the Eurostar to get in and out of London and any other adjoining country that they service